Today we're going to be changing the wheels and tires on a 2012 Mini Cooper. I know, changing tires. Who needs to watch a video on that? Well, I'll tell you what, they're probably all uh, over out there. And uh, I don't care. This one's mine. Watch it. You're going to love it. First step, open them. So I got some new wheels and tires from Tire Rack. Uh, I really like my old wheels, but tires are worn and I hate sitting at a tire place. The old wheels get chipped and stuff going down the road and they just don't look as good anymore. So I got these new ones from Tire Rack, same size. Same basic model tire, just because I like the way they fit. I like the way they ride. They're pretty quiet. They're a general G-Max AS05. And the wheels are, uh, I don't know, what are they? Alutec, like the Michael Dolta Botchigen from Germany. Uh, Drift Sport, I don't know, whatever. They look kind of cool. So, there we go. We'll see if I like them as much as my others. First thing, I gotta get these out of the way because my jack's behind them. So whenever you're doing new wheels and tires, you always want to get them positioned. Because if you don't have them positioned, you're going to find that you get the jack in place, you get this in place, and things are in your way, and it's kind of annoying. So I'm just gonna put these where they go. Now if you look this, it's supplied with an installed centering ring. That little plastic piece, make sure it stays there. It lives with that wheel. That's how, make sure that it gets put on centered on the vehicle. Same here, same one. The ones that are on there have them as well. And when you're changing them out, you'll notice that uh, after the first time, right now they're real tight and fit well. But they start loosening up and become easier to lose. So every time you put these on and off, you want to check, make sure that that ring is still there. General G Max 21540ZR18. So the 21540, according to Tire Rack, doesn't fit this car. However, I'm here to say it fits quite well. So my two rear ones will go right here. Let's see, are these ones directional? That's another thing you want to check. Because if they're directional, they'll stay on the sidewall. And you must make sure you have them in the right direction. Okay, these ones are not directional, does not appear. The ones they're replacing certainly are directional. You can usually tell, typically, uh, they'll have all the tread going in a certain direction or a V pattern. Like to me, these ones I would have thought would have been just because the direction is all kind of one way, but maybe it doesn't matter. And there's the last one. So when you order them from Tire Rack, this is typically how they come. They're shipped in four pieces, because you can't just get one big box full of wheels. That'd be ridiculously heavy. How's a UPS guy gonna handle that, right? Can't expect that, that's nonsense. So I'm peeling off all this tape. You really don't have to. It'll come off on its own anyway. But I don't want it there. I don't want a litter. All right, so my two front ones are in place. Two rear ones are in place. This little box here has your goodies. So let's check it out. What's our goodies? Jeez, oh, Pete's.
All right, screw that. I don't need all this. <laughs> there we go. I'm in. I'm in, guys. Useless book. Box. Bag of things. So what are these things, might you ask? Well, I'll tell you. These should be new lug studs. This car doesn't have uh, lug bolts, I'm sorry. This car doesn't have nuts, it has bolts. All right, so there's some brand new ones to go with these wheels. <clears throat> Let's get all these off to the side, out of the way for right now. Oh, that's gonna fill my dumpster. All right, now the things you want when you're gonna do this. Whenever you're gonna change your wheels and tires, you want a jack. Jack like this is my favorite. It's faster and bigger than the silly little things that come with cars nowadays. Also, um, I don't know if it was an option or not, but car didn't come with one. Minis are small and light, there's not much space. I think you have to pay extra and tell them you want it. Otherwise you don't get it. <coughs> Some other things you want. You want torque wrench. You want a socket. Mine uses a 17 for this Mini. And a key for those bolts I got, which has a 17 head. You want a four-way, which could also fit your appropriate size thing and you want your manual I also have an allen key because this wheels on it I have an allen holding my center cap on the new ones have no center cap so let's get the jack in place let's get our four-way let's get our thing and let's get some bolts handy. Uh, now, got all these things. There we go, they'll go here. All right, now I got all those things roughly where I'm gonna be using them for the first one. I'm gonna do the fr front side first. You wanna make sure you set your e-brake. If it's an automatic, you pick up the front, or if it's an uh, anything, if it's not four wheel drive, once you, Pull the drive wheels off it can move i don't want it to move right because i'm gonna be putting on a jack now here's where you want to consult your manual if you look through your manual you can find where it'll tell you your jack points and all that business right yay yippee -ko -ko so i'm gonna look for a dirty page real quick where's a sticky page dang it i don't have one all right let's go to capacities let's see wheels we'll go to the index because I'm looking for torque. Tightening lug bolts. There we go. Torque 175. That's what I want. There we go. 175. 103.3 foot pounds or 140 newton meters. Nomometers. Numer, 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 numer. So this section, this is why I looked this up. Because guess what? If you're doing this, you're changing your wheels and tires. You need to know where to jack it too. So this shows you where your jack points are. Uh, whenever you're changing it and jacking up your car, you want to make sure you hit those jack points. Most new modern vehicles are what's called unibody. You can't just put it somewhere on the frame and have it go. You gotta find that jack point. On this car, there's one right there. There it is. Oh, I'll get a flashlight under there in a second. And oh, you want to get the jack under there. One problem you'll see is my jack whoa trippy doesn't fit it hits so doesn't go low enough i'm sure you can get jacks that do mine does not the front of this car is just too low for this jack so how are you going to do that might you ask right well i'm going to get it lined up with it so that cup jack point cup right I'm going to pick up the front of the car, and I'm going to put the jack underneath. Oh, you know what? Let's get the suspension to help us out a little bit better. 
Let's remove the e-brake just to get it on there. Oh. <clears throat> so obviously you lift it up, the way the wheels move, locks it into place. So you pick that up. Now you can see, move the car a little bit, starting to go under. There we go. And that's it, you just need to pick up your car. And now, there's other things real close to it, underneath there. You don't want to get on those other things. So if you get on those other things, just like not using a jack point, you could cause damage. So, see those other things? I hope you can, I can't. I use my fingers to see. I don't want to be on them. You want to be on that pad. So now I'm on that pad. Now, I want to set my e-brake. And what's going to happen is once I jack it, I'm only going to have to do that this one time. Once I actually jack it, it's going to lift the way the trailing arm suspension goes. It's going to go like that. So then after that, when I set it back down, the car will be higher until I release that e-brake later. So then I'll just be able to slide it under all the others. I could have done the back one first. And then I went ahead to lift this because then the same idea, the back is actually a little higher than the front because it's made to uh, obviously have a load in the back, whereas the front is made to be at its ride height. All right, now I'm just going to do that so it doesn't move. For this kind of jack, you got to turn this to lock it. I turned it to lock it and then you can pump it. So I just want to do that, like I said, so that jack doesn't move while I'm fiddling with stuff. Now I got an Allen key here. For this allen screw here's how i change out the center cap on these wheels they have these nice pretty center caps that cover all your lug bolts so now i got my lug bolts we get at them all i want to do right now is crack them loose a little close to this propane here oh that's all i want to do just crack them loose because it takes a good bit of torque crack them loose so I don't want to do that while it's in the air I want the weight of the vehicle holding that wheel I don't want to put all that strain on the drive shaft or shaking the car around while it's in the air now I got them loose jack it up now when I go for my winter tires to my summers these summer ones are a little larger my winter tires I have on the factory wheels and they're the factory sized tire so they're actually smaller So you have to go a little higher than just off the ground with those. These ones, same these, so that's not an issue. Now here's why you always want to use a four-way. It's got weight, it builds momentum. It'll spin itself, right? Or you could, whoosh, boom. Look at that. First lug, out. Whoops. Second lug, out. Now you'll notice I'm leaving that bottom one in for last. It's because the bottom one kind of holds the wheel right now. Second I get rid of that bottom one, the bottom of the wheel is going to come out. So I'll get my foot there so it can't angle out. And then Mr. Lug Nut comes out nice and easy. There we go. Now, if you'll notice, the wheel just walked itself off for me. What a nice wheel. Just so I don't lose these, I'm gonna put them back where they go. And then I'm gonna put my center cap back on there. Where is that main screw hole? Right there. Okay. And I'm gonna put this cap on just so they don't go AWOL. Then the next thing you're gonna have to do is get this out of the way. Let's wheel it around the back. Whoop. I'm gonna end up putting these in storage, but for now, they're gonna live there. Now you can see why I wanted to replace them. 
Uh, they got little nicks and chips from rocks kind of all over them. They still look pretty decent. They don't look bad at all. But on a black, when you wax them, I mean, yeah, it kind of shows. Plus, uh, it was only 500 bucks for that new set. So, why not, right? It'll look fresh. Give it a new, a new spirit. Can't go wrong with a new spirit. Re reinvigorate your lust for your automobile. Now I'm gonna get my four logs ready. There they are. Put the rest back there so they're out of my way. Make sure my torque wrench is set. So I said 103.3 foot pounds or 140 pneumometers. So this has 133. Doesn't show me specifically 140. I could do some math. But this, I could easily get to 103. <laughs> so let's do that. You turn your handle until you get to 100. <clears throat> There's 100. And one, 102, and 103. There we go. Bingo. Bingo was his name. Oh, so that's where it needs to be. Ready to put my wheels on. Let's make sure we got the right direction. I don't. There we go. Righty tighty. Let's get our wheel in place. So we got main bolt on top. Let's try and get it in that orientation, right? Cool. There it is. Ready to go up. There's our center piece alignment, ready to go. Let's uh, get this in place. There it is. Take a lug. And I always like to do the bottom one first. And that way, just like you saw, that bottom wants to tip out. So once I have this one in, the rest will be easier. Why doesn't it want? to go oh. there we go nope you gotta get this wheel on there just right there we go and then rotate a little bit get that weight off of it all right now this should go in pretty easy if it doesn't you might not have it lined up right Let's shed some light on the situation. How about we? Well, it appears that I'm lined up right. Oh yeah, there it goes. Just needed a slight wiggle. Now, if they're hard to go on, you know, this is not the first time this vehicle's had Lugs going in and out. They should be wear, worn fairly loose, right? So, if it doesn't go on smoothly, chances are you're cross threading it. You want to stop, you want to reevaluate the situation and start over. These are all, with these fresh bolts, a little too tight to hand do. They're not tight, but they have some resistance, so the bolts need to loosen up a little bit. But not a problem, we'll just use our four-way. He makes it quick work of it anyway. Oh, there we go, that one goes in nicely. Very nice. All right, next. Very nice, a little resistance. You don't want to put anything on your threads. You don't want to put any C's. You do not, absolutely do not want to put any kind of thread locker. No lubrication to try and make it easier. You want nothing, because what that lubrication is going to do is it's going to get in there, uh, or even that anti-C's or anything that they like, people like to put on stuff, uh, and it's going to change your torque values. It's going to create a little layer of lubrication between your parts you don't want that now before you set it down you want to get it somewhat tight not real tight somewhat tight and all that's gonna do is help keep that wheel centered till you get it on the ground then we set it down weights off of it 
Bingo was his name on. Now let's smoke them down with the, and I say smoke lightly. If you're using the air, um, you should quit right now. Uh, this is not a measurement on the Ugga Dugga scale. This is a, a measurement, a value that you must achieve. It's been tested by automotive manufacturers to ensure that you hit the proper torque values. It's uh, a tested and proven amount of force required for clamping that wheel on there safely in addition to uh, making sure that it doesn't come off or damage the wheels. So aluminum wheels are aluminum, right? If you don't know much about metallur met metallurgy, yeah, that's the word. Metallurgy, it sounds fun, doesn't it? Metallurgy, 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 that's the one. From now on, it's metallurgy. So if you don't know much about that, uh, aluminum is one of the most buttery soft metals that you can get. Uh, so buttery soft is not good when it comes to wheels, right? You don't want buttery soft. Well, you kind of do because it's also extremely light. So they typically put more bigger sp or more spokes and stuff like that, right? You can make these cool designs and cast them much better than you can with steel. But then the main thing is they're light, less rotational mass. Rotational mass robs horsepower from the vehicle, robs fuel mileage, robs efficiency, and just makes it harder to turn that wheel. You don't want a wheel that's hard to turn. You want it to turn smoothly, softly, and easily. Quick and responsive, makes the vehicle feel fun, makes it handle better. Blah, freaking blah. So, aluminum's the way to go. But, being buttery soft, you over torque these. Uh, this can actually stretch the hole. It can stretch that countersink, it can damage all that, and that's not good. It can also, as you torque it down too much, it can smear it, smear that aluminum. Like I said, buttery soft, buttery, man, you can smear it. If you smear it, <coughs> if you smear it, it'll have grooves, it'll have stuff, it won't have a nice bearing surface for your lug nuts to go on. In addition, since it's buttery soft, it's also not as strong as steel, right? Look, I just did the opposite of what I said to do on the last one. That's okay. Um, but anyway, um, buttery, buttery soft, soft keyword. So uh, not only can it stretch those holes, but if it stretches those holes, it could crack that wheel. Cracking a wheel's no good, is it? Absolutely not. Then it can fall off and while you're going down the highway and kill three babies on the side of the road as well as yourself. Never a good thing. So you always want to use proper torque values. If you're doing, if you work in a tire place and you're doing this on the Ugga Dugga scale, I suggest you quit and go flip some burgers somewhere because you suck at your job. <clears throat> now, again, store these bad mamma jammas up. Get this guy here in his little storage hall. Now, typically also, another thing I do before I put my wheels and tires on. As you notice, all these wheels that I got, they got this nice painted color on there. Uh, well, paint likes protection. So I usually wax them. I'll use a new finished car polish put that on there first but in the interest of not doing a lot of work today I uh, skipped that but that's okay I'll hit them next time I'll hit them in the fall when I put my winners back on I'll clean them up get my winners ready to go on because it'll be fall and why not right so now <clears throat> more metallurgy who wants more metallurgy I know everybody does metallurgy is awesome so when it comes to tightening these guys, here's another reason you want to use the proper torque values. So, I keep saying metallurgy, right? What's that? The property of metals. So, um, metal heats up 
and it expands right like most things it's really less metallurgy more like physics at this in this stage but uh, that's what happens it heats up it expands well if I have a bolt keeping this to a fixed spot it can't really expand much can it mm -mm. so your bolts will grow your metal will grow but why is it getting hot in the first place I don't understand that well if you hadn't noticed your lug nuts your lug bolts they go into your brake disc or drum if you're that kind of guy um, however <clears throat> so that'll keep them from being able to grow right uh, well if it keeps it from being able to grow and it heats up what's gonna happen it might stretch your bolts lock them in there for all eternity it might actually even just warp your materials right that ain't good so if it if it does grow guess what my buttery soft aluminum is gonna be the one to give and it's gonna change its shape so all as it can't grow in there it's gonna grow here if it grows here where there's nothing holding it guess what that changes the shape of your wheel and if you're on the Ugga Dugga scale or you're just doing it by feel um, there's no evenness so if you notice there's a star pattern you do to tighten these right well that's for a reason you want even wheels go round do si do <clears throat> so if they're not even it won't be a smooth ride it'll ride like crap maybe handle like crap maybe it'll get some funny tire wear let's set this one down there we go now I gotta do my torque <clears throat> continuing on with the torque measurements so you want your proper specs right uh, but I'll tell you what I do these four that's not the end of it according to tire places it's typically after about 100 miles 60 miles something like that depending on where you go they want you to bring them back and retorque them well, I'm not going to a tire place so you know what I am going to retorque them in about 100 miles reason being all that shrinking all that stretching brand new parts they can find their own little thing one might come loose if one's loose guess what you got some problems might throw off your balance might throw off your handling might warp your stuff and as we already said that none of those are good outcomes oh watch out for the dangerous chemicals <clears throat> Whew, all this talking and doing is out of breath and <clears throat> <clears throat> now like I said you can see right now clearly this gap is larger than it was before but they're the same size wheel and tire and like I said that's because the e-brake second I drop that e-brake it's gonna drop down to its normal ride height also the front goes like this so it gets track width gets narrower when you lift it up so now the tires hit the ground and they're keeping it from going like this so Take the e-brake off, drive back and forth, and it'll settle back down to its normal height. I still have the other side. Oh, watch out for the dangerous chemicals. <clears throat> Where is it? There it is. Now, this side I haven't lifted yet. So... Guess what? I have to lift the car. Not that much, though. So let's lift the car again. Ugh. There we go. There's the Ugga Duggas, right? Ugga Dugga! Nope, nope. I need one more Ugga Dugga. Ugga Dugga! There we go. Now it's under. Yes. Use my fingies to ensure clearance around. Perfect. Beautiful. And now let's just make sure that it is where it is. And repeat steps. Oh, this one's on there good. 
So now you'll notice when I go and store these, I put these center caps back on, I put the bolts back on. Uh, why? Well, why not? I order new ones that come with it. Also, uh, center caps, you'll notice they all fit a little different. So and these screws are not all necessarily the same. So if they're not the same length and they fit a little different, obviously I want them to look right. So I'm going to keep them together. So I'm not constantly jockeying them back and forth trying to figure out which one goes where. But then also these are balanced. So if they're not made the same, guess what? There might be a light, little different weight somewhere. Could throw your balance off. So once it's there and once it's paired and once it's smooth, I keep it that way. There we go. Crack them loose, jack it up. Crack them and jack it. <coughs> crack them and jack them, crack them and jack them. Sounds like some kind of a uh, YouTube video from Bama. I don't know. Get it off the ground. Bingo was his name. Oh, now she's free to spin for me. Four way, only way to do it. <clears throat> Look again, I just did what I said not to. That's why I always say to do it because it's hard to forget. Saves you a little trouble, too. Look, my wheel's already getting crooked now. Dang it. <clears throat> Boom. <clears throat> now, a lot of you guys are thinking, why the hell would you do this video on changing your damn wheels and tires, right? <clears throat> like I said before, this one's mine, so watch it. Uh, also, uh, a lot of folks look at my channel, they see all my toys, my cool toys. So I don't know, maybe kids look at my stuff. I don't know, maybe they don't. Maybe I'm too big of a nerd. Beats me, but maybe also you have a lot of folks that maybe haven't done this before. They always just go to a tire place. And now in the spirit of the Rona that's out and about, and people are at home, maybe they just don't want to go sit at a tire place. You know, like I said, I don't. I got things to do. If I do this, it takes me 40 minutes, maybe. I don't know, we'll see how long this video is. That's how long it takes me. <clears throat> but if I go to a place, it takes them 40 minutes to get their heads out of their fucking asses and get the car in a stall. And then it takes a guy 16 coffee breaks to get the fucking thing changed out for you while you're just sitting in a waiting room. I don't like sitting. Now you could get a ride if you live close enough. I don't live close enough to anything. I'll tell you that right now. So that ain't happening. <coughs> Unless my wife follows me and then we take two vehicles. And we're not just gonna do that, right? Cause, well, why would I take yours and not mine? So then, it becomes an all-day thing you switch out cars and uh, yeah your whole day I'm not gonna say a shot you got something done but you didn't get shit done and I got shit to do so you get shit done so new friends how do you like my videos if you think I should keep doing them you should comment like this Share this, spread the love. Get more people out there. Let me know if you like it, if you don't like it, or if you've even just got some more information you wanna share. I love information if you hadn't noticed. I know lots of useless stuff. I know lots of useful stuff. And there's stuff I, I know that I don't know that I know. So, uh, sometimes just talking being in here and just talking to myself as I'm doing things. Wow, maybe I did know something else. I don't know. Now you don't want to tighten these before you get them all in. You just want to get them somewhat there. You know, just a little, little bit. Reason being, until uh, you get your wheel settled in, this one might be straight and maybe that one's a little off. 
until you start getting them all in. So it just makes, them, makes it easier to get them all in and then tighten. Otherwise, right off the bat, I'm literally only doing them tight enough to keep that wheel from flopping around much. But I still want it to be able to move so I can line up all the other lugs. Crack it loose, set her down. Boom, she's down. Let's get this under the next one. Because I wanted to move it anyway. This next one, I don't have much room, do I? That's going to be fun. Oh well. It's the nature of the beast. All right, it's under. It's there. Now let's torque them. Now, torque wrench. There's a few different types. You have your beam type, there's, uh, which come with digital or analog. Uh, you also have this. This is known as a click type. So it's got your little thing in there. When you do this, science happens inside it, and uh, you hear that click. That's that spring letting you know, hey, you hit the number. So there you go. And that being said, it does work both ways. So if you have one going the other way, all you gotta do is flip this. Same graduation, does its job. That's cool. <clears throat> Torque wrenches can be pretty pricey. I think I have like a $500 one in here. And I have this one. I like to use this one more because a oh, $500 one has a much bigger range. It's a little better quality and feeling, but it's got a much bigger range. This one. I'm almost maxing this one out on this car. It can do a little more. So I can like do the lug nuts on my truck, for instance. But this one doesn't have the capacity to do my brakes on the truck. If I go to pull a caliper off, this one can't do it. I need the other one. So I bought this one first because it was cheaper and I didn't have lots of money the first time I did it. So I got the cheapest one. Learned my lesson, but now what? Guess what, I got the cheapest one. I still want to make use of it. I don't want to just living in there so every tool has its purpose maybe it'll save the other one save me from beating it as much we'll beat on this one a little bit and then i'll beat on that one again i don't know that's a good thing to do all right get that center cap off let's crack them so and jack it crack them and jack it oh that's a problem now it isn't Whoo! Whoo! now just like when you tighten them in a certain pattern I like to loosen them in that certain pattern as well just because really I don't know if you're supposed to or not but I like to it seems like a good idea get it off the ground and it's off the ground there we go I'll do it the way I said Who needs Ugga Duggas when you got manpower? <sighs> yeah. Yeah, boy. Boom, wheels off. Again, of its own accord, these wheels are so polite and respectful. I'm gonna miss having them around. I really am. But you know what, like I said, it's gonna be a personality change for the car. After I get these on there, we'll get it out there in the light. See how it looks. I feel like these wheels are not that special. They really aren't. But they got a look and there's particular design. Honestly, in my opinion, makes them look larger than they are so this is the exact one why i changed them if you'll notice on these tires on the center here it's got the wear thing so normally it says replacement tire monitor and now this one it once it wears down and it reveals replace tire now i've hit my wear limit my wear bars are there I've hit it so it's time to replace that tire they didn't all do that all right that one looks almost new that one looks almost well the outside's a little worn on that one 
This one's got some wear here. Oh, that's, sorry, that's the inside. It's because your camber on the vehicle. You'll also notice by the dirt, you can clearly see it's worn funny, right? Why is that one dirtier than that one? Why is that one dirtier than that one? It alternates. And that's because of the weight riding on the shoulder, it's kind of getting some cupping going on. Uh, I don't like cupping. Cupping makes it go and makes it noisy on the road. These being directional tires, you can only rotate them front to back. Because if you put it on the other side, guess what? They're backwards. And then they're not going to funnel water like they would. They're going to hydroplane more. They're going to be less likely to perform as intended. So that's why I'm happy that these new ones I got don't seem to have any kind of directional requirement on them, which is nice because then I can rotate them in a standard X pattern, which means that you can make them last longer. So instead of just wearing this one out, they'll all wear out. <clears throat> now I said they're directional, right? How do I know that they're directional? Uh, right there. Rotation. So you want it to spin this way going down the road. If we go through, you'll see now these two are the opposite direction because they go on the other side, right? Those are the first two I changed, so that's directional. Now, if we look at the pattern, you can see that clear difference. These do, these don't. Uh, here's another thing. Oh, I missed one. <clears throat> here's another thing. There's no directional arrow on here, right? Nothing. And now you'll also see something else funny. I said they're the same tire, the same everything, right? And they are. So how is the same tire different? General G-Max. General G-Max. Uh, 2015 Ford ZR18, 89W. 2015 Ford ZR18, 89W. M plus S, M plus S. Well, it's M plus S, mud and snow, FYI. These are mud tires. I just want you guys to know, take these, take these bad boys out in the field, you'll do fine. Um, and then, so what's the difference? How can the same tire be completely ass backward different? Well, here it is. General G-Max ASO3. General G-Max ASO5. Oh, I get it. It's an updated version. This is like the new driver for the computer. Uh, they said, you know what? This, this works great, but this is how we can make it better. So every few years, just like shoes, just like cars, they come out with the new model. This is just the new version of that tire. So <clears throat> we may have some slightly different fit issues as well. So once I get it outside, I want to check because I said they are the same size. I, I think I lied, honestly, uh, because I think these tires, I could be wrong. It might be an eight inch width. They have the same off space or back spacing, which those ones are seven and a half width. So if I'm changing from width and the same back spacing, what that is going to do is uh, means I'm gonna have, the outside's gonna be in the same spot, but the inside is gonna be further back. Uh, now it has the same size tire, right? So what's that gonna do? Well. A half inch of difference in the wheel means that tire, its center, has now split that difference and moved a quarter inch inward. It means this outer lip might be a quarter inch in from where it was on a seven and a half inch. So that also means the inner lip might be a quarter inch in from uh, where it was on those old ones. So now around is not all that matters. I also have inside. So there's brakes, there's turny thingies, there's suspension thingies, things that make it go up and down, all kinds of thingies. And you wanna make sure it doesn't rub on any of those thingies because if it rubs on any of those thingies, it could make this fail, it could make those thingies fail. And just like these, those thingies are pretty darn important to keeping you on the road. Now look at that, remember how I got my key? This comes with one too, so now I have another one. It's not really too much of a key. They're pretty generic as you see, but it's not a hex. Not a standard hex. I actually like these ones better, like I said, even though it's not a key, just because uh, uh, you get this extra reach and then I don't have the socket 
wearing away, knocking around on my wheel, uh, chipping away paint and making that look ugly, right? I just have this nice little bolt I put on the inside and then job gets itself done nice and cleanly without messing anything up. So that's always a good benefit. All right, let's just put a little snuggy poo on there. Give all these wheels just a little tiny snuggy poo. Let them know we like them. There they are. <clears throat> let's get this stuff out of the way. Done with them, right? Boom, 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 boom. Set her down. Get it out of the way. And let's torque it. Boom, crack. Boom, crack a lack a lack a crack a lack a lack a boom, crack a lack a lack a lack a lack a boom, crack a lack a lack a lack a job done. Time me, hit me. What's it? Check in the bottom, let me know what it's at because I ain't looking. Now I'm gonna get it out in the sunshine, see what it looks like. Now, watch it drop. There we go. Back on the ground. All right, let's see, how's it looking? See, it's a little bit lower now, fills those gaps better. I need to clean the rest of the car. They look pretty good, don't they? They don't look bad. Different personality, that's for sure. I don't know, I might like the others better. We'll see in another day or two. All right, let's get it back in there. It's gonna be down on its normal ride height. And there's one more step. All right, now it's back at its normal ride height. Tires look a little squishy maybe, right? I don't know. Uh, let's find out. So the last step we want to do is we want to air them up. Uh, because I ordered them from Tire Rack, right? And they mounted and balanced and blah, blah, blah. Uh, it doesn't mean that they necessarily got the air pressure right or where you want it. So if you check your manual, it'll tell you where you should put them for that vehicle. Like I said, this is, you know, laugh all you want. It's considered like a performance vehicle. So if you go from the manual, they tell you, well, if you're doing this kind of driving, if you have this much people, if you have this much cargo, if you have this, this is what you should do, right? Helps with your fuel mileage, helps with everything. Well, I think it says like, I don't know, for fun and shit like that, you want like 40 PSI. And I've actually found 40 PSI makes the tires wear the best. Uh, whenever you go anywhere, they like to put them at the 35. I hate 35. It's soft, it's squishy. Your tire doesn't have the meat. If you look at the tire, the tire says max of 50. So 35, that's just over half of what the tire can take, right? So if you're only just over half of what the tire can take, guess what? You're only half the load the tire can take. Uh, it's only providing half of the support it should provide right and my original wheels and tires certainly couldn't take 50 uh, <clears throat> so 40 on them was damn near max uh, so these ones you could probably even go a little more so 40 on these at the end of the day what I'm saying is the support they'll give you is probably equivalent to the factories on 30 uh, So it's not just not just an arbitrary number I like it that's my reasoning and my rotations have shown me that that wear is best uh, tell you let the tire guys dick with it and set at 35 and then they get all cupped like that uh, and then you got to get new freaking tires so always always check your shit because the Ugga Dugga guys don't give a shit about the lifespan of your wheels and tires. 
What they do give a shit about, however, is your fucking money. <clears throat> so, if you give a shit about your shit, do this shit. Check this shit. Don't assume they did what you want them to. They're going to do what they want to. And you're not watching to catch them not. Air over 40. So, like I was saying, uh, last time I actually had a wheel that got bent. I was going down the road uh, on the way back from Minneapolis. There was this huge, huge pothole that was right underneath a bridge. And they had the road coned and funneled. And it was a sunny day and it funneled. And then the pothole was right in the shadow. So you didn't even see it as you're getting up to it. Nailed that sucker at like 70 because that was the speed limit. And uh, pinched my tire. But my tire was okay. It didn't bubble or anything. But I actually bent the wheel right in that area. It had a little notch where it hit the edge of that pothole. And uh, that sucked. Um, and the tire didn't give much support at all. Because guess what? It's rubber. And it was at the 30, 35 that the tire place put it at, right? Uh, so since then, when I've kept them at 42, I've hit some pretty big potholes. Some, I'd say, probably larger than that with a load in the vehicle. And they haven't damaged them at all. So that's another thing. The support the tire gives, that's a noticeable response to it. Now, I got them all aired up to their 40 PSI. I got them all installed and torqued. Now, like I said, tire places want you to come back and re-torque them. I'm going to do that, but when I do it, I'm just gonna be checking them. Personally, whenever I do that myself, I've never seen them come loose. When I've taken it to a tire place and they've done it, not all the time, but I've had where I come back and one or two of them is loose and like free spins back in before I can torque it. So uh, I don't know if something makes them do that. Possible, I'd assume. Uh, but it's also possible that they do, you know, 200 of these a day. Uh, maybe they forgot a lug nut. Maybe they just do that because they figure 100 miles isn't enough for it to just fall off on you and they'll double check their work later. <laughs> I don't know. Beats me. Uh, now, here's another reason you don't want to ugga dugga. You want a torque wrench. Uh, back when I was a youngster living in Pennsylvania, uh, we'd go to this tire place in Forest City, which was the nearest town. And they never told me. I'd never asked them. But those, those dudes, they ugga dugga -ed. And this is how you know. I could never, ever crack them lugs loose. I'd be 130, 140 pounds jumping on a pry bar, literally both feet. Good luck. So, and you periodically have to drill and cut off a lug nut and then you got to replace the stud. God, it's a nightmare. And you don't want to be stuck on the side of the road with that. So if you do take it to a tire place, which I do, in between new stuff, I'll take it and have them balance them and all that business and maybe rotate them and stuff, whatever, right? Maintain them. I come home, I always check them myself with my torque wrench and I always check the air pressure myself as well, except that last time, like I said. <laughs> when you forget is when they get you <clears throat> so uh, always check that stuff yourself make sure it's where you like it uh, and where your manufacturer likes it where those two agree together so you can ensure that while you're out and about driving with everybody's mom baby uh, and stepmother mother grandma whatever out there on the road that you're safe and they're safe all right see you next time <laughs> <laughs>